Jed just got some bad news today. Do you want to share with us what it is? No, I don't want to talk about it. I think you should. You'll feel better. I logged into my Aptera page, aptera.us, signed in, and it gives me the estimate of when I can see my launch edition of Aptera, and the date has moved from 2024 to 2025. I'm hoping that that is not the case for those who are on the accelerator program. I'm hoping the whole focus is on getting the accelerators, their actual dri drivable at Terras in 2024 yet. If you are on the accelerator program, leave us a comment below. Let us know if your date has changed. If it has, we'll talk about it more. If it hasn't, we'll just assume that that's the focus is getting the accelerators, their cars. And since we're not on the accelerator program, we have to wait a little longer, but we're but willing to do it. But it's a good time to set expectations because they're working on the PI builds right now. So once they get the production and temp builds, they have to crash a bunch of them to test airbags and such. Mm -hmm. They have to validate everything on the car. We right. know that's going to take a while. We're okay waiting into 2025. Uh, probably the accelerators will have to wait till at the best, the very end of 2024. Right. Because of all the work that has to be done. So this is just a good time to take a mental check. Mm -hmm. And just be honest with ourselves, as those of us who have pre-ordered the Aptera, we're yeah. going to have to wait. Yeah. And that's worth waiting for, in our opinion. Right. And already they were saying the accelerators to expect, the accelerator program to expect delivery in September or the fall of 2024. They just said 2024. So, didn't even say yeah, that anymore. So we yeah. knew it was going to be later yeah. in 2024 before even the accelerators started to get their, their Aptera. So this is not a huge surprise. We're not on the accelerator program. So, of course, we have to wait a little further back in line. And it's worth the wait. We'll be okay with that. Which brings us to our next topic. What yes. can I drive now? Because we're driving the Nissan Leaf, mm -hmm. which is a fine car, but it has very low range and it's much lower in the winter. Yes. And it's becoming a little bit of a burden for our lifestyle. <laughs> so what are we going to buy next? I don't know. What are you going to buy next? There's one thing we're definitely strongly considering to buy while we wait for Aptera. And, and even as a replacement to our Leaf, period, because we'll mm -hmm. still need a four-door car sometimes. Right. That's the Chevy Bolt or the yes. Chevy Bolt EUV. Yeah, I would prefer the EUV. It's a little bit bigger to fit more of my friends in the car. So yeah. I would like that. <laughs> All two of her friends. So the, <laughs> the good news about the Chevy Bolt is that now it's really affordable. We had a comment from Tom Bouchard recently who said that he had helped his kid buy a Chevy Bolt and paid like $13,000 yeah. for a low mileage car with a replaced battery mm -hmm. and extended warranty yes. with a replacement of the battery. So if you're keen, you can find deals like that on what could be a great used EV. And only now are these mm -hmm. prices becoming somewhat sane. Right. for used EVs that are good used yeah, EVs. Yeah, because first of all, m more good EVs with decent range and good, better, you know, batteries and efficiency, they're, they've become more available. So now people are rolling them over and they're coming available on the used market, but also just the wide range of EVs that are available. So some people who had to drive an EV and bought a Chevy Bolt early are now maybe upgrading to a Kia EV6. And so they're Bolt might be available five. used, so Tesla yeah. Model 3, who knows? Yeah. So there's good news in that realm. Now, there was a big news story this week about, because we had this huge polar vortex cold snap hit, especially in Chicago, there was a big mess up at one of the uh, charging stations, Tesla superchargers, right. where a lot of cars ended up stranded. So we'll give our thoughts on it, but we're not going to deep dive into it because uh, some of this was, why are you driving around with no battery? <laughs> Charge it up. There's 600 plus chargers in Chicago. You don't have to be at that one, and you shouldn't be crawling in at 5%, especially in the winter. Two, if you have a Tesla, precondition your battery. Mm -hmm. So when you get to the charger, it's warm, and it'll charge at a reasonable speed. And three, if you ran out of gas in your gasoline car, you would not blame the car company or the gas station for not working, because you're the dummy that ran out of gas. Don't say dummy. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes it's me. But there were legitimate issues, too, when it comes to EVs in the winter. True. Like all cars in winter have issues. It's true. The fact that batteries and cold are really opposed to each other is no... It's, it's no surprise to any of us. All of us have had trouble or had to... If we had to replace our car's battery when we were driving ICE cars, it was almost always after that first really cold snap because it just drained what was left of our aging battery and that was it so just just because that wasn't scientifically <laughs> accurate what really happens is the heat kills mm. regular batteries car batteries and then that weakness shows up 
in the winter when they have to crank under cold conditions. But with the EVs, this is what we find ourselves. Uh, the range is way less. Mm -hmm. On this really cold stretch where it got below zero, we lost maybe 30% of our battery in our LEAF yep. and in the BMW i3. Yep. Also, one time, I almost never have to use DC fast chargers, but because of the limited range, I did this week, yep. and it charged about half the speed of normal because the battery is cold. And most of these inexpensive EVs like we drive, they don't have any preconditioning ability. So just be aware, if mm -hmm. you buy an EV, you will have challenges in the winter if it gets ridiculously cold. And that's just life. That will happen. And you should consider yeah. that, especially if you're thinking of getting an EV and if it's gonna be your only vehicle like and if you is, live in a colder car. climate, Take that into yeah. consideration because it, it might be a deal breaker for you depending on how long your commute to work is. For us, we don't have a long commute to work, so it works out fine for us even with these considerations. Another thing that happened with the BMW i3 in this frigid cold this week is it limits the power. You It limits your top speed and your ability. I mean, we don't go top speed anyway, so that wasn't a big deal for us, but it was interesting because on the panel, the display panel, it shows you how much you can't access because of the conditions around you. And then as you drive more, you get that, that power range back, which is a really cool feature built in to protect mm -hmm. the uh, battery in the car. So anyway, there's a couple of takes. One at Terra 2025 for us. Okay, we'll see. Uh, two, EVs are becoming affordable, used EVs. And three, beware. If you buy something that has real good battery management and the faster onboard, char onboard charging, you'll do a little better than you will if you buy what we bought, like a Nissan Leaf. Mm -hmm. But we didn't pay very much for a Leaf and we really, really True. enjoy it. So yeah. weigh yeah. your options. Yeah, and if you're shopping for an EV and it's a hot summer day and you think, oh, this has just enough miles to get me where I want to go, be careful because in the winter, winter is coming. it's going to change. Yeah, Winter is coming. So be aware. Good. That's it. Thanks. Right. Jan's here, Drive the Lightning, the Positively Charged EV channel. Thank you so much for the coffees. We really appreciate it. And all our new subscribers, thank you yes, for being here. Yes, thank you. Here. There's another video, and if you want uh, to watch it, it's right here in the box. Thanks for watching Drive the Lightning, where we get a charge out of driving.